Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another disappointing episode. What is the most moving and convincing thing I can use to persuade non-Muslim people to make them accept Islam? When did you become a Muslim? Four months ago. What, what convinced you to become a Muslim? Is Islam convincing? Are there solid grounds for believing Islam to be true? Today, we conclude our series. A female monkey, she committed adultery. You believe it? Read this hadith with me. During the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, I saw a she-monkey surrounded by a number of monkeys. They were all stoned in it because it had committed illegal sexual intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> and I too stoned it along with them. So this Abdul, he want to confirm that monkeys are Muslims and they are practicing Sharia law. <laughs> the story is not supposed to. There is a female monkey. Her her husband was sleeping in, on, over her arm under the tree. And then another monkey. He come from behind the tree. Hello, my name is Ali Dawa. And obviously he's good looking. Crook. Well, are you a crook? <laughs> And she could not resist the temptation so she took the arm they took her arm from under the head of her husband's head and then she went behind the tree and they did like you know ah, oh, flipping out this guy has to be a bloody pirate and then after she finished she got back and she put her head she put her arm under the head of the husband again but by doing that he woke up and he started sniffing her he sniffed her there and he smelled the sperm oh, I'm making <laughs> so he starts screaming hello but so all the the groups the monkeys they gather and to question what happened and he told them my uh, my beautiful uh, wife she did it sit on me it's it's such i know it's i know i know it's it's not ridiculous so the big monkey he gathered the muslims and they look for the female monkey and they stone her i thought what the hell is this but the funny about their story is how they fabricate i mean all of this and you are a witness for it and this is in sahir bukhari brother this must be a true story <laughs> Several places in the Quran describe some Jews who were transformed into animals. Beliefs about human to animal transformation are of universal. Oh, what a dumb thing. Look at, look at. I want to first address Muslims who want to claim that these verses about Jew monkeys are metaphorical. Let's start with Ibn Kathir. We said to them, be you monkeys, despised and rejected. These people were turned into howling monkeys with tails after being men and women. Ibn Abbas is reported to have said of be you monkeys, despised and rejected, that it means Allah changed their bodies into those of monkeys and swines. I think which is pretty stupid, okay? The young people turned into monkeys while the old people turned into swine. Tafsir Jalalain, we said to them, be apes despised, rejected, and they became so, and died three days later. This is just so bad, but let's carry on. Tabri states that Mujahid is in contradiction with a clear indication of the Book of God, for God relates in his book that he made them into monkeys and pigs. Maldudi says the words of the Quran indicate that it was a physical metamorphosis. In my opinion, their bodies were transformed into those of apes. Oh, oh, how backward. But speaking of Muhammad, let's hear what he had to say. The Jews were apparently transformed into all kinds of animals. Some lizards were brought to Muhammad. He took a stick and counted its fingers. He then said a group from the children of Israel was transformed into an animal of the land. I'm asking you a question. Is this applied to you or not? Find out. Or in another narration, a lizard was presented to Muhammad, but he refused to eat it, saying, I do not know. Perhaps it is descended from one of the generations who were transformed. I find it yani, very amusing. Muhammad said a group of Israelites were lost. Nobody knows what they did, but I do not see them except that they were cursed and changed into rats. Yeah, cold, absolute cold. We can still see questions on Muslim Q&A forums like this. Are the monkeys and pigs that exist nowadays humans who have been transformed? Is this applied to you or not? Find out. Now, there is seriousness in all of this stupidity. <laughs> Unless you've been hiding in a very, very deep hole under a very, very big rock for a very, very long time, you know the Muslim world is absolutely full of anti-Semitism. I open the door, I find a cockroach on its back. Muslims, if you find yourselves bewildered by all of this craziness, you do have the choice to sail out of the sea of Islamic stupidity. I highly encourage you to do so. 
anyway let us see what the conversation between your prophet and between his donkey and let us see what kind of a prophet we are talking about this is the book of al-bidaya wa nihaya which means in english start and the end the book of ibn kathir the imam of ibn kathir this is a very well known uh, book Allah, you guys just don't know it's called hadith al-himar or the story about the himar the donkey now the hadith is saying the following let us read the prophet he used to have he he won from the jewish when he attacked the jewish he won four male donkeys 10 ounces of gold and silver and a black donkey you see and black donkey and he is really kind of like uh, with muscles mukattal then the prophet he did talk to the donkey so the donkey uh, the prophet talked to the donkey and the donkey did talk to the prophet how a human being can do this now let us see what the conversation is is about the prophet he said to the donkey what is your name Hello, my name is Ali Dawa. the donkey he said my name Hello, my name is Ali Dawa. is a Yazid the son of Shihab the God Allah the God Allah he made 60 donkeys like me all of them nobody did use them except prophets so those special donkeys made for prophets and he is the last donkey of his generation makes sense the last donkey for the last prophet <laughs> and I was waiting for you I was waiting for you I was expecting you prophet to come before you a jewish guy he used to be my owner i used always to make him feel down man this donkey is really bad he he's causing the jewish guy to to feel down he don't like him this jewish he used to not not, not you know not to feed me good and he used to beat my back the prophet he said you know what I'm going to call you Yafur. The name of the donkey from today, his name is Yafur. Oh, what a dumb thing. Look at, look at. Ah! Then he said to him, Ya Yafur. The prophet saying to the donkey, he start using the name now. Ya Yafur. Ya Yafur, which means, hey Yafur. Hello. The, the donkey said, yes, sir. Hello. Lubbeik. The prophet, he said to him, look at this question. This is a disaster. Hey Yafur, do you like females? <laughs> <laughs> what? The prophet of God. Do you see it, guys? Call. The Prophet is asking his donkey if he likes females or not. Yeah, Annie, come on, man. Come on. A Prophet of God is asking his donkey, do you like females? And guess what? Guess what? Surprise. The donkey, he said to the Prophet, and he's angry. Oops, I don't like females. Oh my, I don't, I don't want you. I don't. <laughs> Bro, this is too funny, man. This is too funny. This donkey, he's a gay. What the hell is this? The donkey was telling him about the Jewish guy not feeding him, beating his back, and the, the prophet right away jumped to talk about females, about sex. Even this prophet, even when he talked to donkeys, he's talking about sex. It's because you're a pusillanimous. Isn't it amazing? I think. I find it يعني, very amusing. This is very amazing. Here's another example. Sahih Muslim 4289. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, Suleiman ben Daud, but this man is not the same. Solomon, son of David, said, Tonight I will go around to 90 women. Oh, flipping out, this guy has to be a bloody pirate. And each of them will give birth to a knight who will fight in the cause of Allah. His companion said to him, Say, if Allah wills. Who's absolutely oblivious to what's going on, even though he's going to read it himself. But he did not say, if Allah wills. And he went round to all of them. None of them became pregnant, except one woman who gave birth to a deformed child. By the one in whose hand is the soul of Muhammad, if he had said, if Allah wills, they would all have been knights striving in the cause of Allah. <laughs> In this hadith about Solomon, Solomon believed that he was impregnating 90 women, which means that he was ejaculating in all of them. And since this is Muhammad telling the story, hey, You're a liar. Repent. Repent. Do we believe what Muhammad said about Solomon? Extremely stupid.
Do we believe that Solomon actually completed the act of sexual intercourse with 90 women in a single night? These sorts of things make you question a lot of things. Let's assume that he started at 6 o'clock p.m. and that he kept having sex until 3 o'clock a.m. That would be nine hours of sex. I was laughing to myself at how illogical and how, how stupid everything sounds. Since there were 90 women, Solomon would have needed to have sex with 10 women per hour. That's one woman every six minutes. Is this believable? Oh, flipping out, this guy has to be a bloody pirate. If you're a Muslim, your prophet is the one who made this claim about Solomon. So you have to believe that Solomon ejaculated into a different woman every six minutes minutes for nine hours straight. <laughs> Otherwise, your prophet was a liar. Why am I the first person to tell you about this hadith? Why do your leaders hide these passages from you? Miracle of Allah. Praying tree facing Mecca. Not only this tree is praying, it's facing Mecca, brother. Humor of the Prophet system is narrated. However, however, brother, maybe you do not know that the Prophet of Allah, he converted a tree to Islam in his time. The Islam is true, basically. How? Oh. This is what I have to deal with. Yes, brother. This is IslamWeb.net. And here, there's a guy asking about how authentic this story about the Prophet ordering a tree to move him from here to there. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, the tree, she converted to Islam and she said the Shahada. <laughs> so look what an Arabic it says. So he ordered a tree and he, she came in her belly, like, you know, like uh, creeping. Yeah! Like this way, you know? And then she stood between the hand of the Prophet. And then she said that the, the Shahada, there's no uh, potato but Allah, and there's no fraud but Muhammad. Three times. <laughs> <laughs> and then she went back to where she was growing. Now, is this hadith sahih? Yes. Because he never said a lie. He never, so I said a lie. Translate to English. Is the hadith, this is the question, read carefully. State that the trees moved from a place, a place, by the command of the Messenger of Allah. Is it true? Is it authentic? Praise be to Allah. We were with Messenger of Allah. And a Bedouin man, he said, he came to Muhammad. And he said, uh, where are you, uh, where are you going? Who, who are you? These hmm. bloody Muslims. He said, which means Muhammad, he answered, that we are uh, people who say there's no God but Allah. And Muhammad is his messenger. So there's no God of Allah but Allah. And uh, Muhammad is his messenger. Oopsie daisy, now don't be lazy. It's time to go to the masjid. <laughs> These hmm. bloody Muslims. The better one, he said. And who witnessed to what you say? Muhammad, he said, answering this person. This tree, this tree, witness to what I say. These sorts of things make you question a lot of things. So the prophet, he called the tree from the other side of the valley. He called the tree, hey tree, come here. And the tree came. What the hell is this? And not only that, the tree, she said that she witnessed that there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is the prophet. The tree, she said shahada. I thought, what the hell is this? Even in the Google translation, it says that this is sahih. And here you notice that Islam is totally a fraud. Because this is pretty much scientifically proven. Not because it doesn't make sense. God can make miracles. But the Quran never mentions such a thing. So why it is in the Hadith, not in the Quran? Give me the answer, please. Why the miracles of all prophets before Muhammad are in the Quran, but then we find miracles of Muhammad only in the Hadith. Allah have time to tell us about Sulaiman, this uh, laughing at the end, the end she said to Sulaiman and all flying carpet. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. But Allah, he will not mention to us the miracle, amazing miracle of a, a tree saying Shahada. The tree converted to Islam. I had to go to these books and really understand how does my mind work? Why am I thinking like this? I had to reprogram. These sorts of things make you question a lot of things. Which means the tree, she took off herself from the ground. She would draw his, her roots. I mean, ima guys, just imagine the story here. That's embarrassing. The Quran says that Allah gave Muhammad no miracles. That we refrain from sending signs. Allah show what, what, saying, what, what Allah saying? He refrain. What refrain mean? He did not send any signs to Muhammad. Now, wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen. And he is telling us why. From sending sign only because of man of former generation treated them as false. But people don't believe it anyway. So Allah, he have a strike. I will not give you no more miracle because each time I send you miracle, you don't believe it. So how Muhammad, he did this miracle? If the Quran says that his God refrained. Contradiction. It's a contradiction. Now the story of Moses in the Quran is one of the unique stories Muhammad he came with. According to chapter 33 verse number 69, a bunch of Jews accused Moses that he have inflammation in his testicles. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! And for sure, according to the story, uh, that accusation was a false accusation and the testicles of Moses are very beautiful. Oh my God! So Allah, he decide 
to prove that Moses, he have no such inflammation. So Allah, what he did, he have a plan. Now I'm going to go and read the whole story from uh, the hadith, because that hadith is more uh, coming with more details from the mouth of Muhammad himself. Because he never said a lie. He never, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said a lie. The Quran say, Allah wa Allah wa and Allah wa Don't be the same as those who hurt Moses. So Allah, he declared him to be uh, free from what they accuse him of. Now what they accuse him of? Suffering from uh, PECMOS, post-colonial master's order syndrome, yeah, which I died Diagnosed a week ago with a few ex-Muslims as well. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, book number 55, hadith number 616. Uh, Moses was a very shy person. He used to cover himself and he had ex ex extensive shyness. It's because you're pusillanimous. One of the children of Israel, he spread rumors about uh, Moses. You are a crook. That Moses, he covered himself, uh, his body, in a way because he had defect in his skin, either leprosy or uh, harina. Allah wished to clear Moses from their accusation. So Allah, he have a plan. Oh, you know, that's so tacky. Please sit down and listen carefully. Close your eyes and imagine what's happening. Dream, 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 dream. One day, Moses was far away from people. He took off his clothes and he put them on a stone. And then he started taking a bath. When he had finished the bath, he moved toward his clothes. So as to take them, but the stone took his clothes and fled. This is burning a hard time. Sounds absurd. The stone took the clothes of Moses and started running away. Unbelievable. You cannot trust anybody no more. These hmm. bloody Muslims. And look what Moses did. Moses picked up his stick and ran after the stone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like this way, you know. Oh, stone, give me my garment. <laughs> The stone keep going, Moses keep going, chasing each other, and he is going after the stone until he reached a group of Bani Israel. And then they saw him naked. Wow. Look at the plan of Allah. Brothers, sisters, imagine with me how Allah is wise. Allah is all wise. He cannot ask Moses to go in front of the Jews and flush his testicles. He cannot do that. Moses will never do that. Allah come with different plan. And look what the Jews found when Moses stopped. Found him the best of what Allah had created. <sighs> This is too funny, man. This is too funny. What is the best of Allah had created? Remember the accusation about what? The accusation is about his testicles. All the Jews are looking and like this. Wow! Wow! Look at these testicles. Allah Akbar. Takbir. Allah cleared him from what they had accused him of. <laughs> You see the amazing intelligence plan of Allah? Like this is, come on, who, who can do such a plan except Allah? Any God in the world, he come with such a plan? No way. That's impossible. What the hell is this? A'udhu Billah! Non-believing boys, servants, wives, people from hell to make more virgins in Islamic paradise. Over 150,000 women for one man. Wow! This is the life. Keeping Muslims in Islam. Allah comes and then gives virgins and then Muhammad comes and then gives virgins and virgins. It's it's such I know, it's I know I know it's, it's that ridiculous. According to chapter 55, Surat Ar-Rahman, Ayah 56, it says, In them shall be those who restrain their eyes. Before them, neither men nor jinni shall have touched them. <sighs> what are you saying? What is this ayah saying, brother? Allah is saying, God is saying, there's not even a little bit of doubt in this book. Not even a little bit. The word is yatmithuhunna. Here Allah is describing what is inside the female part. And this word is talking about the hymen. I just couldn't believe it. It's, it's a different world from where I was at. And why is the Islamic paradise all about sex? Is that what Muslims want? No jinn, no man touched their hymen. Wow, this is the life. <laughs> if you go to chapter 55, I have 56 of Tafsir Jalalain, brother. From among the, either the men or the jinn who are reclining maidens who have not been touched who have not been deflowered. The what? Their hymen. Dream, 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 dream. Wow, this is the life.
But in this guy is genuinely stupid. And these maidens, so these are females, are either Huris or women of this world of who will have been created anew by any man or jinn before them. So do you see? Every time you deflower them, according to the tafsir, you will get new recycled Huri. I'm going to be here forever. <laughs> <laughs> so Islam is nothing but a man-made religion made for the males only. Excuse me, Islam to me is one of the most, is the most feminist religion. But that is not a reality, that is a pure life. And they will be busy deflowering hymens of female huris. Islam is the only thing that offers proof for everything it says. But that is not a reality, that is a pure life. After today's teaching, you're going to be convinced and inshallah you will say the shahada, brother. Mashallah. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is nothing but a fraud.